They are the unappreciated and challenged. They are the drug addicts. They are the infected with AIDS. They are the convicted felons. They are the battered wives and neglected children. They are all over the place. You see them everywhere. You see them when you go out. You see them when you go to the mall. You see them when you drive by Route 59 or, or wherever you go. So, very clearly, the overlooked are the ones you are, we are overlooking. Just like the shepherds, all are invited to come. We have been invited. We have been in need before. The Bible describes us before we came to know the Lord Jesus Christ as dead in our sins. And when someone took the time to witness to us, we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and now we're here. I want to share some pictures about, uh, I don't know if it's already ready, but some years ago, David Robinson, who plays basketball for the San Antonio Spurs, but, uh, by the way, David uh, uh, Robinson, was form, uh, he was a former, uh, he plays for the Navy before he became uh, an official or, or a, a professional basketball player. So he, he attended a church in, in Texas, in San Antonio. And uh, you can imagine when this seven-foot guy just, you know, walked by. Everybody can see him because he's so tall. And after the service, after the first service in the church where he attended, people just, just, come to touch him and shake his hand and take picture and, and, and talk to him. And, and uh, he accommodated all of them. And they were drawn to him because he's, he's a superstar. He's, uh, and he's a Christian at the same time. But um, after the service, after everybody has left, he, he left. And people just started to calm down again and gather themselves. During the second service... As the pastor stood to do the announcement, a homeless person walked in. Can you please show that next photo? All right. So a homeless person, the same church, after David Robinson left, the second service came, pastor did the announcement, this guy came in from the back, walked throughout, through the aisle, sat at the front. The contrast was so obvious. When David Robinson was at church, everybody would like to touch him and get near him. When this guy came, sat in the front, nobody wants to be close to that person. But then in a few moments, in maybe two, three minutes, one of the members got up from his seat and sat by the man. And after the service, this man who sat by this homeless said, I want to buy lunch. I want to buy you lunch. And he brought this homeless to a restaurant and they ate together. What happens if all of a sudden a homeless man just interrupts, like we, we would label it, interrupts the service by coming and what will we do? Will you cover your nose? Because these guys, they, this man, they, they smell. They, they just, people just don't want to get near them because a lot of us are afraid of homeless people because they can rob us, they can hurt us. But they are persons, they're people. They have their, their, life, their life, right? They're just like us. It just so happened that they lost their home. And they couldn't find a job. And they're homeless. So what I'm saying here is, do you see them? Do you see them when they are outside? Here in Rockland, we don't see many of them. But when you go to New Orleans, the city of New Orleans, almost every street you see homeless person. And uh, most of them are accepted by the society. People don't, don't bother. They, get, they ride on the bus and people just go along with them. 
And uh, you would hear them mumble and say, oh, can you spare me a dollar just for food? And spare me a dollar? And spare me a change? One time, I was, uh, <laughs> I was at Palisades Mall. I was so hungry. Um, I bought um, a combo at uh, Popeye's. I'm excited. Uh, I have, I'm going to eat it at home. So I was carrying my bag. I mean, uh, the plastic bag with my dinner, like three pieces of uh, chicken thigh wing and drumstick. <laughs> and I'm, I'm really very hungry. So uh, along the way, as I went through the third floor, I saw an elderly lady walking. A homeless lady walking in the mall. And there's a good distance between me and her. And I have a chance. I was debating myself, should I get my dinner? Should I keep it? I'm so hungry. I think I'll just go the other way. But my feet just keeps walking straight. <laughs> and she passed by me. So I was walking slowly. And she was walking, and, and you can smell the air after her. But then after a few steps, I stopped, and I decided to give up my dinner. I gave it to her. I, I actually I chased after her. I said, excuse me, excuse me, and she stopped. And I said, here, I, I, I just want to share this to you. And she said, oh, thank you so much, thank you so much. And then I just, I just left. But then when she left, there was two young men. Who saw, the, who saw what happened? And they were laughing at me. And they were saying, Oh, you gave you, you gave you food to that stick lady? Okay. But you see, I'm not saying this to elevate myself, but I just want to share an experience. And it's not easy for me. I was my dinner. And I have to go back to Popeye and buy another set for, have, for me to have a dinner. But I, I, I have. But if it's, if it's you, what will you do? Will you just look the other way and say, somebody might be merciful enough to give dinner to that person. What I'm saying here is, if you're there, do something about it. Because that's the heart of Jesus. Jesus said, whatever you've done for the least of this, my brethren, you've done also to me. And so, if I want to touch Jesus... If you want to touch Jesus, touch these people. And you'll be able to touch his heart. And that's the essence. That's the main message today. We can find special purpose in seeking out the forgotten, the ignored, the homeless, people like that man in the picture. We can seek out the untouched, untouch them. And then again, in, in, in the message translation, Luke 2.10 2, says, and the, As the angel declared to the overlooked shepherds, he said, I am here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody. And that is the challenge for us. Will you touch someone this Christmas? Let's bow our heads as we pray. Before I close in prayer, I'd like to give you a chance to commit. Will you commit to touch someone this Christmas? Will you commit to let go of something important in your life to be able to lift a heart this Christmas? Maybe someone needs to be Encouraged. Maybe someone needs to be visited. Maybe someone needs to be heard. You can touch that person's life by being available, by lending a, an ear that is willing to listen. Will you commit to that? Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us today that when you are ministering when you are walking with your disciples 
you touch the blind man, the woman with a severe sickness touched the hem of your robe and got healed instantly. You've touched lepers and healed them. You've touched dead bodies and they came back to life. Lord, right now we are your hands. We can touch someone with your love in whatever way you want us and we can. We just, meant one, we just need to make ourselves willing and available. And I pray that this will be true to all of us today as a challenge and as a privilege at the same time. We thank you, Lord, for this Christmas season that we can be a channel of your blessings. And that is our desire from our hearts. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you all.